Yeah, I don't know if that's any better with the, the flash on, the light on. But okay, so here's what I set up. I Essentially what I've done is I set up, so in the building and the woods along here, the five conscript groups, as though they were made to fill those gaps. Then I've got um, second line squads here, 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 and here. And this one has the heavy machine gun, so he's designed to, to deny all of these from the Americans. Um, coupled with this one joining in, and these are basically covering them, so that they're, they're denied, keeping these ones. Then the thought is, is that this unit here has light machine gun, Light machine gun, second line squad, light machine gun, second line squad. So those are a deterrent for the German to set up here to keep him to think this is the thinner crust. That is easier pickings to bring him round here. And then these are going to be essentially a counter-attacking force, which is why I put the 8-1 leader to join up with these. These ones, once the Americans are not moving through here, if they do or don't, then they will move over and... Um, join the perimeter defence and or as a counter-attacking force um, to retake buildings and so, such like. Um, and that's the basic thought. Now, the danger with this is that um, my units are all well sp spaced out. I've got leaders here to aid in rallying. So th these are all have leaders, so they can all rally quite well, but they will have difficulties with routing so, for example, when this one routes, he'll have to route back here. He could get, could cause some trouble. In fact, I think I'll put him there because he's going to need to be a bit of a buttress. That's got a machine gun as well. Um, so that's the only thing I don't really like. These ones are okay. They could route back into these buildings. But... That's what I'm going to do. I, I'm committed to it. Now, now the problem is the solo players to decide, do the Americans decide to come through here or here? So I'll have to make some kind of fudging to do that. Okay, so here's the plan from the American perspective. Yes, this is the spearhead. Um, we'd, It's obvious to keep well clear of this open ground with these machine guns. It'll take a long time to get through the woods too. Um, this is the closest we can set up. Um, we could have thought about spreading out a bit just to keep these occupied to prevent them moving to defend here, but no, we're just going to figure it out in the first turn we can get up to here. In the second turn we will pierce this line and hopefully get to these buildings and then uh, start moving out from here. So essentially we've got um, three squads with heavy with medium machine guns. It's good the Germans have Americans have two medium machine guns, which means that the squads will not be encumbered. It's all factored in in ASL. They had heavy machine guns, they would, they would be slow and moving, but they haven't. So they, this is a mobile force. There's one flamethrower here, um, and that's with the half squad. It's got a slightly higher morale than the others. The others have a higher morale once they're broken, which is um, these uh, infamous American 666 squads means they have six... Um, Got more than uh, range, yes, so firepower range and then morale. But quite remarkably, normally units have a lower morale or, or the same morale on the back once broken, for, which determines their speed of recovery. It's eight, so the Americans break relatively quickly but recover a lot quicker. Um, but this one you see, there's one half squad in the mix, he's got a higher starting morale, so I think he's meant to carry the flamethrower and he is going to clarry the flamethrower so I hope you know he needs to get up close without breaking to use it I've given him a 9-1 leader the 9-2 leader is the main with the main assault group here and the 8080 leaders are with the machine gun groups because so they're going to be needed to rally those machine guns to keep them firing um, and this leader's firepower bonus and rally bonus is going to be needed to keep that force moving. And then we've got um, to, uh, some balance units, reserves on the side there. So it's going to be a very mobile force. The idea is to keep moving, spread out, taking essentially just the first section, um, which will garner us... 
26. So if we take all of these, it will give us 26 only hexes for the win, and we can give or take one in that case. So the Americans have the first turn. This six and a half. So the Germans actually do not get a, a last turn. The Americans get the last turn on their own. So they get the first turn. Um, uh, the first phase is rally. We don't need that. Second is prep fire. That they're not laying down any preparatory fire. So the next phase is movement. They're going to move. And because of all these buildings, lines of fire, and the conscripts only have one, two, three line of fire, we can get up close. So one, two, three, four, five, six. With a leader, that's movement possible. We need eight to get to that building, so we'll go seven here. Now we start getting into fire, so... Um, this conscript squad. So Captain Dunn is leading the charge, the movement here. And we've got Sergeant Harpet on the German side as the overall leader of the defence. Uh, so Captain Dunn, essentially what we've done is we've moved one squad up. He's going to take some fire. Roll a seven. Hang on a minute. No, in fact, I don't think that is in line of sight. That's my mistake. I misread the hexes in my haste there. Now, I'm not going to do all this, so I think what I'll do is I'll show you the results of the movement. This would be interesting for people who are not into air cell but are interested. There's loads of other good videos for that. No, so that just crosses the building there, so there's no line of sight. So that's one, two, three. Three, four, five, six, seven, there, and then in the advanced phase, he will go there. So knowing these are not in line of sight, is it the same from there? So you you have to eyeball it first. You cannot check prior to the sh shot. So in fact, he has first fired, and this fella is going to first fire. I don't think there's much danger with that because. Americans I don't think have to move to go crazy. Um, yeah, that can't be seen either. So the conscripts are firing a bit wildly. Um, full ASL, you could skirt around these buildings and probably get to there. Vanilla ASL, no. You just take the two movement factors for the building hex and two movement factors for the... Um, Oh no, it's only one movement factor for what should, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ah, uh, but he needed the leader, and they all needed to be together. So I'll say I was risking that, because I want to get them up there. They would have to move together to all get the leader movement benefit. So when they get to there, yeah, seeing that as a juicy stack, they're going to fire when they get to there. I'll allow that. So they, they rolled a seven, didn't they? Seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, they only have firepower of four. No, I'll tell you what, we'll say they fired, and then these ones fire. So they have firepower of eight. These fired at that with the checked line of sight. So these ones said, okay, I'm holding back to these fired as they came up. So we've got firepower of eight. They rolled a seven, eight, nine, ten for building. Just no effect. But we do have some residual firepower in that hex. Okay. I'll see if um no, I was gonna say I'll see if I can play around with editing, speed up part of this, but YouTube video editor has been removed so and I don't have another at present. I have such a low end machine I don't getting a sort of heavy video editing program it's gonna be quite cumbersome. Now the next decision is I could move a whole stack following them. Um but I've noticed that he actually has fire 
probably got fire into that hex. Maybe just definitely into that one. Um, it's at long range, but it's still be worth it in the open moving fast. So either I send these as a stack and they get the leader bonus, or I have to send them in dribs and drabs. I think we're going to risk it. So they would go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And he will get off a shot in that hex. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, so he will try for a shot in that hex, which is at extreme range, extreme effective range, we should say for conscript, German conscript squads. And he's got it. Okay, so what's the roll? Where's my old guys? They rolled a four though. That is a good shot. Minus two because they're moving in the open. Um, residual firepower. So they're down to half firepower. So that's two firepower. Residual of one, half of that. So um, we're looking at a two firepower. What did I say? Five. Roll down to three. One morale check. And the first roll is ten, so eleven. So the leader breaks. And now let's roll for the three squads. Five, six, eight, nine, ten. ELR of three. So they. That means they're sort of the level of the squad goes down there. They don't reduce in numbers, but they're kind of like um, somewhat discouraged and so forth. Perhaps some men are panicking and not as effective now. And they break. Second one, four, five, they made it. And the third one, seven, eight, they broke, but they do not ELR the place. Okay, so we've got two breaks. Uh, three uh, three breaks counting the leader. We got some residual firepower, and he continues into there. This one's first fired, and uh, the, the machine gun toting fellow is broken, and. That was risky, and I was probably a bit too risky with the Americans there. But I don't know. I want to get them up quick because they can rally quickly. So even if they've, you know, I might have taken an extra turn to move or an extra turn to rally. I think about it, the move is more certain, isn't it? Well, it is certain. Although they would have another chance of fire at them. Um, okay. So with the next stack... There's a machine gun which is going to have a bead on it there. So I think their job is going to be silencing that machine gun to allow more units. I, I'm just going to have to funnel units through here. So really I want to take that, that squad out. Because otherwise that hex is covered. Um... Okay, so slight change of plan. We're sending one squad with medium machine gun over here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now the other ones I had to mark CX because they were leader led and exhausted because they gave an extra push. You don't have to mark the broken ones such. Um, okay, so he's there. Uh, he cannot, he's been firing at them, so he doesn't get to fire at them. If he was adjacent, he could. Uh, I correct myself, he could fire again on them, because he's going to be closer than the last unit he fired at, but only at normal range, one, two, three, so he doesn't have effectiveness out to there. Okay, um... So one, two, three, four, 
five, six, the remainder of that group could move up with um, counter exhaustion. I think that's what they're going to do is they're going to try and break these ones up. They're going to have that one to fire uh, one to, as they come up there. That's seven. Plus three is ten, minus one for moving is nine. Nine on a two fire pass shot is not good enough. Okay, and then these. Six, okay. Now the... So these guys, one, two, three, four, five, six. They will move up on their own there. Not too far. Very bad on them. That leaves them still with some first fire possible. It's good to get it while the units are moving rather than the next phase when they kind of gone to ground. Um, Maybe we could fire on that one, but it's too late now. So let's move up the flamethrower. One, two, three, four, five, six. I should have put a bit. No, he doesn't need to go into action yet. Six. Okay, just lead of lead, no counter exhaustion. Put that there. And then. There is a shot from the machine gun here. He's going to take it. He doesn't know there's a flamethrower there, but he's going to take a sh opportunity as and when it comes because he might not get another one on during movements. So that's that's two, three, four, five firepower minus one because of the units moving plus three because it's. Moving into buildings, so we got eight, seven, ten. That's too much. Okay, so nothing. And we didn't get rate of fire, so that machine gun will not get to fire again this third turn. Um, so these ones are safe up to here, for, except from that one and the machine gun. The machine gun could so, but it's pretty paltry. I really wanted more units up into these closer buildings. They don't, they would not lead the lead, they can't do it. I should have had the leader leading these fellows up and he would go and join the flamethrower later so such as it is so he's going to go and final fire oh no there's a closer unit so he, he doesn't get that um but the machine gun can that's a long shot oh i rolled a two so the machine gun's only going to be firepower of Half firepower, so that's one and a half, goes down to one. Um, oh no, the machine guns has got rate of fire as well with that. Okay, so um, hold a two, minus one is one, plus three is four. Normal morale check, morale check roll is nine, so that's six, seven, eight, nine, just within ELR, so they don't. Reduce in quality, but they do break. Okay, and we've got residual firepower of one. So these two fellows are going in here, and they'll be ready to move further. They're going to be safe doing that movement at this point. So that's that movement phase over. The next phase is the defensive fire phase. So he hasn't first fired at all so he can final fire in this phase at full firepower the 
against let's say I remove the residual firepower markers because that was just in case other units went through those hexes they would take some of that residual firepower as they called okay so he's going to fire at this stack here um, which is just a flat four minus three shot minus three for the buildings he rolls a seven I should say plus three for buildings goes up to ten on four that's not good enough so no effect now the, the other fellows um, these fellows can only fire an adjacent they don't have any except for this one so he gets to fire again half firepower two doubled for adjacent so he's the same sort of shot four rolls at six seven eight nine on four is still too much so that's the end of the defensive fire phase and those conscripts it weren't very effective but they weren't they're not expected to be they're just there to stop the americans from running across blithely in open terrain Okay, so now we go to the advancing fire phase, which is where the movers, the fellows who've been advancing, get an opportunity to fire at half firepower. Um, and we've got potential fire groups here, so this is going to be fairly devastating. So these fellows, three of them, that's 18 firepower, halved and then doubled because of adjacency gives us 18 firepower we could add him in as well but I think that's it brings up to 20 I think that's overdoing it I'd rather have him have a go at them these have minus 2 because of the leader lead so that's 18 firepower and it's minus 2 because of plus 1 terrain effect modifier plus 1 because of woods so that's minus 1 on the die roll I roll an 8 which goes to a 7 on 18 gives us a 16 column that's a two morale check and I roll four five six for the morale check then roll is six so it goes up to eight they have broken they have not reduced in quality because their ALR is also three the same as the Americans okay great so he's got three against them that's not much three plus one so that's seven eight no Essentially, that's a two shot. I need a six or a lower for any effect. These broken ones can't. And now those nice portable mean medium machine guns, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe they can fire in the advancing fire phase. I'll just make the roll, and if it's going to make a difference, I'll check. The roll was seven um, against one of these against this fellow was the one um, an eight so six that would be a pinned task check but with the okay so it's going to make a difference I'll just check that rule yeah no you can't fire a medium machine gun because just it has to be dismantled, doesn't it, to be ported that that speed? So that's pin task check. And all the four from the check, so he's all right. Um, darn, should have been a fire group. Let's, I would have done the fire group. So let's say, so that was six firepower. Mm. Yeah, six, five, five. No, that is a pin task check, so it wouldn't have been if it was just one. Okay. Um, does he get a go? I think he can go against him. Let's just see if it's going to be effective. Six. Yeah, that would be a pin task check, which would have been. Okay, so I don't need to check for that. Would have been obviated. And they. They can get advancing fire of six against that. No, that's ten, that's going to be nothing. And these fellows. Yeah, six. 
uh, flamethrower, I guess. Flamethrower's out of range anyway. Uh, I hit range of two maximum, so six against this one. I've got six. Leader lead minus one, so that's five plus one for wood. So six. Six. Oh, six is one morale check. So roll of 11 goes up to 12. They cannot reduce the quality because they're the lowest quality possible. <laughs> but they do break. Okay. So that is the uh, advancing fire phase. Now we go to the route phase. These units that are adjacent to good order enemy units have to route back. These ones that are in an open ground will low call. They cannot go closer to enemy, known enemy units. That's the ones they can see. So potentially they could go there. That's sensible, isn't it? Move to the nearest buildings, not necessarily the ones behind you. Um, firing's coming from all around sooner, but that's a fine. And they're okay where they are, but I will actually, what have we got in this hex? Okay, they can't go in that hex or else they'd be overstacked. Um, that's a shame because I would have wanted them to go there for the leader to rally out. I'll leave them where he is. Okay. Um... So that's the route phase. Now we have the advance phase. So they, these fellows can advance one hex. Are they going to go as a stack? Yes. In fact, they're going to be a bit gung ho. One of them's going to advance to open ground there to sort of. Dismay that DM unit. Okay, that's where the action is, isn't it? Okay, is that focus? I think that. Okay, so he can advance into there. They can advance into here, which I think is free. I think he's got that covered, although it takes a hindrance from there. They're not going to advance into the open there. They're all advancing here. Ah, that's the thing, yes. I, I could advance my leader into there, or do I need my leader here to bring them, move them further? One, two, three, six. They could do it there. I don't think they could get any further than six, helpfully. So they don't need the leader. They can do it on their own. Put the leader in there. Um, okay, you see, it's problem with I got funneling, but. Okay. Is. Okay, um, I'm sort of happy with that. And then close combat, there's no close combat. So that's the American turn. Now we switch to the German's turn. Starts with the rally phase. We've obviously got some of that. Now they can self rally one unit. Commanders can self rally. Um, I believe this is legal. He can even try and rally, but. Normally you can move the DM, which is demoralised, so he's got penalty on rallying. So he's 4, 5, 6, 10, so he doesn't rally, he doesn't get to remove the DM. Um, no, he doesn't rally, but, oh, and he doesn't get to move the DM because he's adjacent to them as well. Should have probably rallied and moved him further away. In fact, I'll say that we did that. Which would have been quite legal because he did move, could have kept 
removing okay um so he gets to remove that demoralized and on the american side they've got a leader there five plus four nine it doesn't oh it's got plus one because he's in a building so the leader just makes it which is great because that means he can rally that fellow on a three yes they both rally okay so that moves your machine gun is back in action excellent that's what we wanted the leaders with them for i think that's all isn't it oh yeah and this one so i rolled a 10 minus one for the leader oh plus four for okay so no okay um and then we go to the prep fire players. Any preparatory fire from the Germans? Well, yes, there's definitely going to be because most of them are just defending, so they will stay in place. But these fellows, for example, or this fellow at least, could have. Ah, I think I missed a shot with him. Never mind. Too late now. Um, but they won't. They won't fire. They would rather move. So the preparatory fire will be from here into this open ground hex so we've got range of four at range of two firepower of four the idea really was that he's um, put annoying him and, and he's sort of soaking off fire from these other folks was the point of him i rolled snake eyes no box cars that's two sixes Machine gun malfunction. I'm all right there, but basically that's not an effective fire. Um, so he two. Yeah, I thought I wasn't going to do this blow by blow, but it's going quite swimmingly, so I thought we might as well carry on. Seven plus three is ten. On a four firepower, we need a seven at least, so that's no effect. And these guys, unfortunately, because they're not adjacent, they cannot combine fire, which one, two, three, just in range. That's really what they want. Um, ten, no, and six, seven, and a ten, no. They needed low rolls. They didn't get it. Okay, so those have all prep fired. These um, broken folks can't. He could prep. Fire. He probably should, because he has to stay here. Because the Americans could still move around this way, so he's going to be staying. So he will be firing. Question is, is he going to fire here at the heavy machine gun but with minus one, or here without the minus one at the already broken squad? Let's go for. The, we want to. Um, break up their attack, not necessarily eliminate the u units outright. So it's going to fire there. So that's one, two, three, four hexes just within normal range. That's seven. So we're on the six column. And he rolled a three. Um, plus one, plus another three. So that's seven normal morale checks. So that was the best result I could get. And the morale roll was six. Oh, sorry, eight. So the leader made it. What about the squad? Ten. No, the squad's broken. That was the result they wanted. Okay, good. So some useful firepower on the um. So there's a turn. I'm just looking for a marker. Prep fire. Yeah. Okay. Prep fire phase over. Movement phase. Hang on. Maybe prep fire from here. Yes. Okay. Six, seven, eight, nine. No, not effective, but still worth trying. Because again, they're going to stay where they are. They're covering the gap here. Remember, we don't mind if the Germans take this. But we don't we don't want them to take this <laughs> okay um at the germans americans i mean okay so the movement phase now these fellows one two three they move there they could fire on them 
Can they fire on them? I don't think so. Could they fire on them? I don't think so. So they will risk it. One, two, three. Um, these guys are going to try and fire. So we put a as a stack. Yes, first fire marker. They've got a machine gun. It's a quick bead. Tells me they can. Oh dear. And I just look at it just now. I thought no, they could. But they can. They've got that. Ooh no. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, two squads at half firepower, so that's six, seven, eight, nine, three. Oh, I thought there was a machine gun there, no, so that's nine firepower minus two, because that's moving in the open without um, cautious movement, so that's seven down to five. On nine five which is eight column two morale check three four five six seven they actually made it so they can keep going um so what was it one two three four five six okay So they've made it into those buildings. Okay, I could have maybe put them there to kind of help cover this, but it's good to have a second line of defence. If they, you know, if the whole stack gets broken, could be problematic. Oh, sorry. Did you see that? Yes, I think you just did. Okay, um... So because the Americans, looks like Americans are going here. I don't think I need to cover, I think these could come round here. Sorry, I'm talking about here. So these fellows are here because it looks like the Americans are going in here. I don't have to, and I've got a fair few here. I'm thinking to move these fellows here. Oh, I haven't used the American smoke yet, have I? I think so. It does slow you down. We can have to speed the first on this next turn. Next turn, I think I'll do it. The Germans don't have any smoke. I'm thinking of moving them here to be to enable fire groups. But the Americans will get shot across at them. Okay, so they're doing cautious movement. Hang on there, that's six. So on an average shot, they will... No, that's not a good move. I think it's too late. They're, they are where they are. I don't want to risk them being... They can kind of some firing movement here. So um, there's no more movement. These ones are staying. And... Yes, I don't know about this, uh, my back defence, because they're going to be out of action for a while. Well, it would have depended on what the Americans done. So defensive fire phase, that's the Americans. Okay, so um, the defensive fire phase, the um, Americans pushed, so it caused a break over there, nothing else. Um, in the advancing fire phase, the Germans had nothing to do. In the route phase, he voluntarily demoralised himself, moved back to here, and uh, I'd considered 
um, that the Germans would have, this guy would have had no problem to move up here. So the leaders here, likewise, this leader had no problem to move around here. There was no shot against him. I realised they didn't have a leader for this bunch. The leader was isolated there with one unit. And that reflection is a minimal benefit. You can benefit more units here. So he, they've moved to be able to be rallied. So that's the right phase. In the advance phase, um, then we get a fresh squad going into that hex too. And um, a unit was pinned there by American fire, so he couldn't advance. These fellows could advance, and I think we will have him advance back there. So he's giving that ground of the woods, but he's a much better defensive terrain, a stone building there. Um, these ones are all holding. Okay, uh, and then we go to close combat phase. There's none. That is the end of the first turn. So you can see how exciting a game this is. That American spearhead has worked. They've, they've moved up. These, these CXs means that these stacks are all exhausted, so they won't be able to take extra movement that that allows the next turn. We've got some uh, broken American units, broken German units. They're, they're concentrating their um, defence and it's going to plan. They've given a little bit of ground. That can come off now. It's the American turn. We're going to really see some action. There's going to be some heavy fire coming out for them. They'll slowly move up. But you can see they have to move quite quickly to, to take all of these or all of, say, about those um, to win the game. And I think looking at the units there, it's going to that their aim is going to be going this way because likewise that these fellows across the street will stop the americans crossing there likewise the americans in here can stop them crossing the street to come at the americans it works both ways so if they can push through and take these and all of that we should have the game let's see how it goes so at the end of their second turn, the Americans have pushed forwards. This is the uh, furthest back unit. They um, they actually lost two units to some close-in fire around here. I believe one was from there, um, and what one was here. Uh, the Americans, uh, the Germans also lost a unit too. So the Americans have some to lose. They needed to take the ground, so that's probably fine overall. They've managed to advance up to here. It's going to be some close combat here. So the Germans have broken units here, here, and here. The Americans have a broken unit here. Um, and their flamethrower is here. And um, the machine guns and the coverers are moving up. They managed to break him. So he's he's a threat. Could potentially break that machine gun there. Um, not to worry, we've got a leader there, and that would take fire off this these two units. So it depends, you know, it's probably far out the more immediate threat. So these are covering the advance. Um, these will move out here. The flamethrowers will, will then pour fire across the street, across to here, and uh, leaving the way to move into to these units. That is the plan. And so here the Americans are forming a perimeter around here. So the German turn begins now. I'll flip this round and I'm going to have to think carefully because um, they've got to keep the Americans from here and they're going to have to keep the Americans from here. They are a bit thin. They feel a bit thinly spread. I think it's all going to depend on the crossing. Um, If they can say so if the Americans take this out with a, a flamethrower then um, maybe that can stop the crossing the street. But the, I, I don't know. Wishing now that this was further away because it's two hexes range. So if the Americans are here or here, they're in flame through a range. Of course, if they were here, this is blocking their field of view. There's not much else one could have done. So start of the second player turn, second turn. I must admit, I 
think the Americans have done well. They managed to pop off one smoke back here, which helped that advance, but failed on another attempt. Um, the Germans are having trouble rallying their units. These conscripts don't rally quickly. Anyway, so it is their rally phrase, rally phase. Um, that's not going to be an easy rally to make. Three, four, five. Don't make it. Okay, this one back here will be the single south rally we're allowed to. Don't make it, but we can remove that. And then here there's a leader to rally to there. The first one. No. Second one would have been a good rally, but with the demoralization. No. Okay, so then we go to the prep fire phase, all important for the defender. Well, both sides really. So the question, for example, is here, do we hold ground or give ground? We could give ground slowly and they won't be fired on. I think that is going to be the wise move. So this fellow can prep fire. And I should have moved these ones back. Uh, never mind. Okay, so he will prep fire. He's going to move back. Temptation is double firepower, but then the Germans will fire again on us. I think it's better just to slowly move back at this point. Um, okay. Oh, that's a good roll. Seven power four. Has to be against him, I believe. Five. That's one morale check. So the leader made it, and the unit rolls are two sixes. That is full ASL casualty reduction. Is it the same in starter kit? I believe so. I'm going to do it anyway. Okay, so the German preparatory fire, including the heavy machine gun opening up for the first time, it actually didn't make the shot, but this one did here, breaking two American squads quite handily, which is great. Okay, so um, movement phase, which means... We just have this one to move back. The Americans don't get a chance to fire on it before it does so. And we're going to have the leader move back too because they can move back on their own. And I think that squad will actually move here. No, there is a shot at it. Mm, I'm wanting to move them there. It's a bit late now. Oh, well, okay. So defensive fire phase. Okay, in the, um, in the advancing fire phase, the Germans fortunately managed to route another squad. And that's the end of their turn. It's the end of the third American turn. You can see all their units remaining on the board. They've now lost three total squads. The flamethrowers here had um, broken. It foolishly moved up to here, got hit from the machine gun across there. Um, but you can see there's lots of squads. A couple of them have um, quality reduced and leaders around here. So they are pushing that perimeter. They're no good. There's a machine gun there and there. Um, heavy machine gun here. Some worrisome units left behind here, but there's enough here. They've pushed across the road here, which is good. So they're kind of tying up these. But on the other hand, there's no leader there now. These units are a bit vulnerable. If the Germans counterattack, maybe they can dislodge them out. We shall see.